we will start with a little review on fractions. I want to talk about what happens when you multiply a number by its reciprocal. So 1 -fifth times 5 or 5 times 1 -fifth. Five, a whole number written as a fraction, is really five over one. So when you multiply, remember multiplying fractions, it's no problem. First you do the top, then you do the bottom. You get five over five, which reduces to one. So one fifth times five is one. And you can either go through this math, or if you just know that one fifth times five is one, any number times it's reciprocal will be one. Same thing here, negative one ninth times negative nine. First, the negatives. A negative times a negative makes a positive. So we'll have positive and then one ninth times nine is, is one. Again, one ninth times nine makes one. So a lot of times we will just go straight to the answer. We will cover uh, adding like terms today multiplying terms, and using the distributive property. When you add in algebra, you must only add like terms. And those are terms with the same variable ending. The first thing I do when I am adding in algebra is to split up the terms. Remember, terms consist of the sign the number and the variable. If there's no variable, it will just be sign and the number. So negative 7x, positive 9, negative x squared. Notice how I'm saying negative x squared instead of minus x squared. I think of this, the sign, as going with the number. Now in order to add the terms together, you have to have the exact same variable ending. So I'm going to start with this one. That's the only one that ends with an x squared. So we'll put that one. Then the ones that end with x can be added or combined. Remember when you're adding with negatives, think money. Positive 3 and negative 7. 1, 3, lost 7. I'm now 4 in the hole, so that's negative 4x. And then my constant terms. Positive 4, positive 9 makes positive 13. This is hard for some students right away because they're used to answers that are shorter. x equals 5 or 18 or 2 thirds. This is the answer. This is the simplified algebraic expression. Negative x squared minus 4x plus 13. Let's look at this one. First split it into terms. Sign number letters. Sign number letters. Now look for like terms. Here are two that have an ending of xy. So I can combine them. 3xy and negative 9xy. Think money. 1, 3, lost 9. I'm now 6 in the hole. Negative 6xy. And these two terms have the same ending. A a squared B, A squared B. So seven of them plus five of them makes 12 of them. That's your answer. A couple things about how it's legal to write these. I can put my terms in either order at the end. So for example, I wrote negative 6xy plus 12a squared b. It would be perfectly fine to write the 12a squared b first and then your negative 6xy. 12a squared b minus 6xy. Or remember also that adding a negative is the same thing. Some people like to write it in this format. These are all three the same answer. Split into terms, positive x squared, negative 8, positive 4x squared, negative 10. One thing I want to talk about here is this x squared. There's no coefficient here. 
if there's no coefficient, remember that it's really 1. Plain old x squared is the same thing as 1x squared. So add your like terms. 1x squared plus 4x squared makes 5x squared. Negative 8 and negative 10. Think money. Lost 8, lost 10. You're 18 in the hole. 5x squared minus 18. A couple of other ways to write that that are also algebraically legal. You have to make sure that the right sign goes with the right thing. I couldn't have a negative sign in front of the 5x squared. Split into terms. Negative 3y squared, positive 8, positive 7y, negative 12. There's only one term with the ending of y squared. There's only one term with the ending y. And there are two constant terms that we can add together. We can collect like terms. Again, think money. Win 8, lose 12. You're 4 in the hole. This is called descending order when you do the y squared, then the y, then the constant term. We go in descending order of exponents. It is equally correct to put them in a different order. That is an equivalent answer. But you have to make sure that the negatives are going with the right terms. There are two terms here, 9a squared bc, negative 2a squared bc. The endings are the same, so I can add my like terms. 9 of them minus 2 of them makes 7 of them. 7a squared bc. Here I have two terms, 5 and positive 8a. They're not like terms. Notice this one is a constant, a positive 5, and this one has a variable in it, positive 8a. So that cannot be simplified. So you can write that, cannot be simplified, or you can just rewrite it as your answer. 9a squared bc minus 2a squared b squared c. I have two terms here. Notice they're not exactly alike. This one has a squared bc, this one has both a squared and b squared. They need to be the same exact term in order to add like terms. So these are not the same exact term, so we have to, we cannot add them. That's just my answer. That's as simple as it gets. So you can either write can't be simplified, or you can just write that and circle it. When you do these problems, you're learning the language of algebra. I'm teaching you, it's almost like teaching you the vocabulary in a new language, the rules in a new language. And that's how I like to approach learning some of these algebra um, procedures. Remember that when you add, you have to have like terms. But when you multiply, anything can be multiplied together. For example, 4 times 2x. 4 and 2x, they're not like terms, but to multiply, they don't have to be. How you do this problem is you just take the 4 and the 2 and you multiply it together and simplify it to be 8x. When you have an 8 right next to a parenthesis, multiplication is assumed right here. Again, they don't have to be like terms. You can just put the 8 and the 3 together, you get 24x. Again, a parenthesis right next to a number means multiply. This is a negative times a positive, so it will be negative. And I can just multiply together the 2 and the 9, negative 18x. Again, you don't have to have like terms when you multiply. A multiplication is assumed right here. A negative times a negative is a positive. 5 times 10, 50x. What happens?
happens when you multiply that by the reciprocal? We know from above that when you take one-fifth times five, you're going to get one. So this will be one x. Whenever we have one x, that would be legal. I would count that correct on a test, but you'll normally see it as just an x. Just an x means one x. Two x times negative one-half. A positive times a negative will be a negative. Two times its reciprocal will turn into one x, negative one x. Again, that would be correct. You'll normally see it written just as negative x. Negative one x, negative x are the same thing. If you need more instruction on why two times one half is equal to one, go to the beginning of this video. One seventh times negative seven x. A positive times a negative is a negative. One seventh times seven is one x, negative one x. Again, we would write that as negative x.